So we saw that the complex exponentials which are phasors are nothing the, but the eigenfunctions of LTA systems and if we can represent any input as some linear combination of these phasors then finding the output becomes very very easy. But can we represent any signal using only these phasors? It so happens that most of the signals of our interest can be represented only using phasors. Okay? And we will see why this is true. We will we'll see a small de MATLAB demo first from which we can motivate ourselves why to consider only phasors and how they can represent any signal. So this is uh, part of the MATLAB code that is provided to you. You can once again play with this code and then see what happens, how phasors create different signals. Okay. So we know that if you have a cosine signal cos omega t, you can express that as sum of two phasors e power j omega t plus e power minus j omega t divided by 2. And if you have a sine signal, you can once again express that as sum of two phasors e power j omega t minus e power minus j omega t by 2j. So we know how to represent a simple sinusoid with two different phasors. Let us see how does it look like when we plot them. Let us start with a cosine signal okay, of frequency 5 uh, radians per second. As you can see, we have two phases, right? E power j omega t and e power minus j omega t. That's what we see here. So the blue color one is the one that is rotating in the clockwise direction, which means the frequency is negative. And the red color one is the one that is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction, which means its frequency is positive. And when you add them together, essentially what is adding? You have one phaser and wherever it ends, you plug in the next phaser and then they rotate together. So when you add these two phasors, the resultant is the point of these two phasors put together. In other words, in this animation, if you see where the red point ends, that is the resultant of all the phasors added together. And it always stays in the horizontal line. And if you see the real and imaginary parts of it, the imaginary part is 0. Of course, because e power j omega t plus e power minus j omega t is a real signal, even though you decompose that into multiple parts, the imaginary will get cancelled out. So you get a real signal which is a cosine wave. That is what we are seeing in the real part. Now what if we introduce a phase shift to these phasors, the same phasors, but we are adding with a different phase essentially dividing by 2j is adding a phase, right? So once again, you see the same phasor, the blue one is moving in the clockwise direction, negative frequency, and the red one is moving in the anti-clockwise direction, positive frequency, and still they are in the same horizontal line, which means the output is a real signal, but the output has now become a sinusoid, that is a sine wave, okay? Why is that? Because they started out with a different phase. So clearly we added two phasors and we got the sine wave and the cosine wave. So can we also get other waves, other signals like this? We can and let us see an example for that. We can get the square wave. We got the sine wave and cosine wave with this, right? So we can also get the square wave just by adding these uh, phasors. So I am going to add first uh, different phasors. So in this case, I am going to add about uh, 9 different phasors. So there are 9 different phasors that are added each with different magnitude. So each phasor here has different magnitudes and hence you will see smaller ones and they will also have a negative frequency and a positive frequency. So they are all still moving in the horizontal line. Okay? So because of that, you will still get only a real signal. Now you are getting a signal which almost looks like a square wave. Okay? Now what if I reduce the number of phasors? So let us say I just add uh, 3 phasors. Okay. In this case you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 phasors. So we have 4 phasors. Now when you add 4 phasors, it does not look 
like a square wave, but it is somewhat closer to the square wave, right? Now, when you add more and more components, let's say now I'm going to add multiple components together. So there are so many faces that we are adding here, but now it looks much closer to a square wave, right? So what is this telling us? The observation that we have here is, so we may need several phasers. So remember we said that there are infinitely many eigenfunctions that are present. You can change that omega from minus infinity to plus infinity. All we are doing here is changing that omega and the coefficient that ai that we add to each and every. So we multiply each phasor with some coefficient, right? So the coefficient of each phasor here is different. And then we are adding more and more phasors. So the more and more phases that you add, you can represent more and more signals. That what, that's what we are seeing here. So when I added only some nine components or three components, the representation did not look much like a square wave. But the more I add, let's say now I add several here, it's going to look very ugly. So the phasors, as you can see, there are so many phasors, phasors here and they're all rotating together. And now the real part looks very much like a, a square wave. I've added several components here, uh, 70 plus components here. So when you add 70 plus phasors, you get almost a square wave. But of course, as you can see here, there are some ripples whenever the, sine, the square wave changes amplitude. So whenever it changes from positive to negative, there are some ripples and the other way around. So these ripples are what are called as Gibbs phenomena. And when will they disappear? When will this perfectly look like a square wave? When you add almost infinitely many phasors. Okay. So what did we see from this demo? We saw that phasors when added together can produce other signals. And sometimes you may need several phasors, almost infinitely many, to model a particular signal. And we saw in particular what is called as this Gibbs phenomena. So it says that when you have a discontinuity, so what is a discontinuity? So in the square wave, suddenly the signal value changes from plus one to minus one or minus one to plus one, right? So this is what we refer to as discontinuity. So at what rate does this change? What do you mean by what rate? rate? At what time interval does it change? Does it take two seconds to change this? signal, does, does it take one second or does it take 10 seconds? The rate at which it changes is almost infinity, meaning the amount of time it takes to change from positive to negative or negative to positive is almost zero, which means the rate of change of this amplitude of the signal is almost infinity. And we know that the rate of change is somehow related to the frequency. So if you have a low frequency signal, the rate at which the low frequency signal or the low frequency sinusoid changes is very, very small. So a low frequency sinusoid looks something like this. So the rate at which it changes is very small, but let's say I have a high frequency sinusoid, then it changes values very quickly in a short time. So if you want to model a particular signal which has a very high rate of change, then you also need a phasor which changes with a very, very high rate. So that's exactly what Gibbs phenomena captures. So if you want something which changes the amplitude almost instantaneously, which means the rate of change at that particular point is infinity, then you also need signals which have almost infinite frequency components, okay? So you need infinitely many faces to represent such signals. This is called as Gibbs phenomena. So this is just to denote or just to understand that just one or two phases or some 10, 20 phases is not sufficient for us to represent all signals. What this tells us is we may need infinitely many phases to represent a signal.